Hello everyone, my name is Yulia and I live in the capital of Ukraine, Kyiv. I work in a Ukrainian think tank and uh, when I was doing the research for refugees in towns, I was an intern in the International Organization for Migration. Uh, I'm an internally displaced person myself. I moved from uh, Donetsk to Kyiv in 2014 and my case report for refugees in towns project was focused on internal displaced persons or IDPs uh, in Kyiv. Uh, I tried to answer the questions uh, whether they feel integrated or are they just lost in the city and uh, how do they implement the city. Uh, let me tell you a little bit more about the background, what happened in Ukraine and what is the uh, current uh, situation. Uh, so uh, here you can see the map of Ukraine. Uh, so those territories in red are occupied by Russia. Uh, here is this part of uh, Donetsk Oblast, um, uh, part of Luhansk Oblast, and uh, the Crimea is also um, annexed uh, by Russia. Uh, in 2013-2014, uh, anti-government protests erupted into what is known as the Revolution of Dignity. Uh, in February 2014, uh, security forces killed about uh, 100 activists. Uh, President Viktor Yanukovych fled to Russia and the opposition took over. Uh, in the spring of 2014, uh, Russian military forces uh, annexed Crimea. That summer, pro-Russian armed groups occupied parts of Donetsk and Luhansk Oblast and uh, Ukrainian government uh, forces launched military response. Uh, according to the Ministry of Social Policy of Ukraine, in July uh, 2020, there were almost 1.5 million people registered as IDPs, and now also some people are not registered as IDPs. Uh, almost half of the registered IDPs uh, settled in government control areas of Donetsk Oblast and Luhansk Oblast, since it is close to, uh, it is close to the occupied regions. Uh, I'd like to tell you also about another case report about the situation in Ukraine, uh, written by Marina Kavanes about uh, Pokrovs. Uh, it had another focus and was concentrated on the role of the displaced uh, university from the next to Pokrovs, uh, which is an industrial town in the east of Ukraine. Uh, and why this case is very interesting is because uh, in the fall of 2014, uh, one of the largest and oldest Ukrainian universities, uh, Donetsk National Technical University, was evacuated from Donetsk to Pokrovsk. Uh, when the war actually started, it was necessary for the universities to be evacuated to the territories that were safe and controlled by Ukrainian government. Um, several institutions were displaced to other cities and towns uh, of Ukraine. Uh, and the total number is uh, 18 universities. Um, regarding general situation uh, in Ukraine, uh, IDP's rights are often violated and uh, IDP's regular face complicated bureaucratic procedures. Uh, that prevent them from obtaining their rights, exercising those rights. Um, the help from the government did not respond to the need of uh, the IDPs from the very beginning. Uh, as an example, people could receive a small financial aid in the form of monthly payments uh, of less than $20. Uh, so mostly people just had to solve the problems on their own. Um, what is what the role of the universities uh, in uh, the process of IDP and integration? Uh, I think this can be divided into two parts. Uh, so first is the role of uh, displaced universities and uh, the role of uh, other universities um, on the territory of Ukraine. Uh, in regard to displaced universities, they supported their students and employees pretty much. For example, universities gave the possibility to occupy the same position as before moving uh, or to stay in dormitories with uh, families, uh, family members. 
And some of the universities were also tolerant uh, to IDPs visiting uh, occupied territories. Uh, I would say this is not so common among other Ukrainian universities because uh, of the lack of understanding of uh, the situations that IDPs may face. Um, in 2016, uh, a procedure of uh, simplified entry into universities for applicants from the non-controlled uh, territories was developed. Uh, with this, uh, people from the conflict zone can now enter Ukrainian universities, uh, even if they don't have a passport, a certificate of secondary education, or a certificate of independent testing. Uh, also, two educational centers were established, uh, Donbass Ukraine and Crimea Ukraine. Uh, here, young people can take exams and uh, enter Ukrainian universities. Um, my research has also shown that other universities of Ukraine play a crucial role in IDP's integration. Uh, social activities, uh, student life creates a good atmosphere for people to feel more comfortable and the process of integration takes uh, much less time. And now I'd like to go to the part uh, about how did uh, COVID-19 pandemic influence IDP's? Uh, so after the pandemic outbreak, as many other governments, Ukrainian government, uh, initiated quarantine. Uh, however, the policies were uh, sometimes unreasoned and uh, they hit unproportionately the most vulnerable groups of population. Among those are, of course, IDPs uh, who do not have a place to return and wait till the lockdown is over. Um, so at least 60 percent of idps live in renting housing uh, unofficial housing market makes uh, the situation even more difficult uh, many people renting housing confirm the risk of uh, being evicted from their current place uh, because of um, inability to pay the rent uh, there were cases when idps could not pay the rent and had to return to occupied areas and about 25% of IDPs, according to International Organization of Migration, confirmed uh, being placed on unpaid or partially paid uh, leave during the quarantine. Um, among the total population, this amount is lower, about 17%. Uh, in March, with the beginning of quarantine, uh, the borders between so-called People's Republics and uh, Ukraine were closed. Uh, they remain closed today as well. Uh, and as a result, many people got stuck in the occupied areas and uh, could not just go back. Uh, with the risk of uh, losing jobs, being separated from the family members, uh, there were many other insecurities, uh, such as, for example, um, the access, access to uh, quality healthcare. Uh, pandemic has had a great impact on students and those who wanted to apply for studying in Ukrainian universities, uh, but lived on the non-government controlled territories. Um, those people could not go to the Ukraine government controlled areas in order to take independent testing and apply to Ukrainian universities because the borders were closed. Uh, for some people, instead of uh, 55 kilometers, so the straight way, the route uh, to Ukraine took uh, 1,500 kilometers since they were going to Russia. Um, some students on the Ukrainian territory uh, were also stuck in the dormitories uh, while studying online and not being able to receive financial support from their parents from the uncontrolled territories. Um, so now this situation is um, not uh, super happy and positive, but uh, I would say here um, there are some perspectives and uh, finishing up, I would like to concentrate on uh, those positive things. Uh, so one of them is that this year IDPs will be able to vote during the local elections, which was not possible before. The procedure of uh, changing the voting address was organized online and it was very easy. Uh, it took only two minutes for me to do it and uh, 
it did not require any supporting documents. Um, this opens definitely more opportunities for IDP's integration and participation. Uh, in regard to universities, also some changes were made. Uh, this year, students from the occupied territories could apply not only to certain institutions of the Nesk and Luhansk Oblast, but to different universities all over Ukraine. Uh, the procedure of applying was simplified for them and their personal information is also protected, which is important. It is not visible on the website. Um, those from the occupied territories also received quotas from the government and can get a budget place, uh, so free education. Uh, in 2016, also, the Cabinet of Ministers of Ukraine established Ministry for Temporarily Occupied Territories and Internal Displaced Persons of Ukraine in order to respond to problems and threats related to the armed conflict and the IDPs. Uh, however, I would say the IDPs did not really feel its influence, um, but still there is a hope, let's say, that uh, this will change. Uh, because having an institution that is responsible for those issues opens many opportunities for actually making policy that will support IDPs and uh, address their needs. Um, I will finish up here and uh, I thank you so much um, and uh, I'm looking forward to live discussion. Bye.